Hi guys, Sneaky Joyce here, and today we're going to review a small laptop, Chevy Minibook X, which was recently released with an updated Intel 150 CPU. I bought this one on a sale on AliExpress with a price of 280 euros, and I did a lot of research about what this laptop is and what downsides it has. And on the paper, it was looking like an ideal solution for me because I wanted to install Linux and daily drive it as a Linux laptop. But unfortunately for me, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows when installing new OS on this laptop, and I'll be speaking about it later in the video. In the box with laptop, you can find a power brick for charging and the tiny laptop itself. For all Apple laptop lovers, you cannot open this one with just one hand. But it also has aluminum back and top covers, and it has a very reflective screen, something most Apple users are very familiar with. The keyboard keys are slightly smaller than the Apple laptop keys, and several keys are even smaller than that. When you press them, they feel softer than MacBook M3 Pros in comparison. To turn the laptop on, you have to press the power button for one second. The initial setup takes several minutes, but it doesn't prompt you to connect to a Microsoft account, which feels good, but is not kinda right. And one of the things I wanted to show in this review is system specs and resources allocation. Firstly, let's inspect the list of software that is running and is installed on this laptop out of the box. While I didn't find anything suspicious, I noticed that I cannot access all tabs in Task Manager, like I cannot check app history, I cannot check services, details, or startup applications. So right out of the box, this Windows installation wasn't really working for me, because I couldn't use it fully. Then I decided to inspect installed applications, and again I didn't find anything incriminating here. And since I was obviously having some issues with the OS, I decided to inspect the BIOS, which is unfortunately very minimalistic. The only really useful options in this BIOS are choosing boot option and enabling always on backlight. So as I mentioned, I didn't plan to stick with Windows and went to install Kubuntu. Normally it's my favorite distro to install since it uses Debian as well as awesome KDE Plasma. But then again, I started facing issues. Mouse cursor was shaking when I was touching trackpad and not moving it. When I overclocked screen, it was giving me a lot of tearing, and tablet mode was straight out refusing to work. Mind you, I tried to apply a kernel patch for Linux that was made for N100 series laptop, but it didn't work with mine. So until better times, when Linux community issues better drivers for touchpad and screen, I decided to bow to Big Daddy Microsoft again and reinstall Windows. Yes, it's time to reinstall Windows, and it doesn't have plug-and-play drivers for monitor, trackpad, or Wi-Fi. So you have to install Windows using only keyboard, and to download drivers you need to go to supportchivi.com and enter your serial key in order to obtain an archive with drivers, as well as a Windows version, which for some reason is a few gigabytes larger than it should be. I suppose they have a lot of Chinese spyware or some other trash inside, but the archive with drivers is also not the perfect solution for a laptop, serial number of which I entered, because it has some extra drivers which you don't need. If you look at the files I unarchived, you can see that we have some drivers for biometric, for some other stuff which this laptop doesn't even have. And installing those drivers is also non-orthodox, because you need to use your device manager. You need to select any device and then action at drivers, and also tell the system to include subfolders. Only then you will be able to get your laptop to working state after reinstalling Windows. And if you are smart about it and download Wi-Fi drivers in advance, you can actually select those during installation of Windows and maybe it will give you a better experience than what I had, but the whole absence of plug-and-play drivers or drivers that are initially available for Wi-Fi and then are downloaded through Microsoft updates is just a huge mess. But after installing everything, I can use both of USB-C ports in order to output 4K 60fps HDR video. Accelerometer in screen works and properly detects when it's switched into tablet or display mode. 
Touchscreen, despite being 50 Hz screen, is pretty accurate and you can draw on it with fingers with some dedication, or you can buy yourself a pen that works with this specific laptop. I decided to skip this accessory because I don't draw as often anymore and this pen also uses a 4A battery, which are not common. The webcam of the laptop is pretty fine despite being 16 FPS. And this is how microphone of this laptop sounds. Like S. So get yourself an external one. The 50Hz screen is also not the most color accurate screen, but is actually pleasant to work with, unless you have a different laptop next to it to compare with. On maximum brightness it's enough to work inside the building, but is barely enough to work when you are outside. The keyboard has two levels of backlight and either shuts down on its own if you don't touch the BIOS, or doesn't shut down even when the screen is off. The trackpad is terrible. Even on Windows with all the drivers, despite being more precise than on Kubuntu, you can click it down only in the bottom left and bottom right corners. You cannot reliably click it in the bottom middle part or at all on the top parts. Ideally use this laptop with a small portable mouse. As for screen refresh rate, I decided to keep it at 50 because I just don't want to deal with tearing anymore. Fun fact, support of Chuvi claims that 50Hz for screen was chosen to not interfere with Wi-Fi of this laptop. I don't really know how this can be the issue, but now you can see the battery and SSD of this laptop, as well as the cooling system for CPU, which didn't really change from the previous model. The bottom cover is made out of aluminum and is held down by 8 Phillips screws, so it's very easy to open. The bottom firing speakers are not as strong as I'd like them to be. And while this laptop works well in tablet mode on Windows with all drivers, it's not exactly the best media device, just because it's lacking good speakers. But if you don't have any alternative, this will do. After all, this laptop can be fully used in tablet mode with touchscreen, or it can be used with a display mode with disabled keyboard and touchpad when it's not used in laptop mode. And while I wouldn't try to game on this laptop due to its low refresh rate, it is wonderful for small productivity on the go, and its battery lasts me about 5 to 6 hours depending on how I use it. So was this tiny laptop worth it for me? Uh, not really, because it's something I wanted. I wanted a small companion for myself that could also be doubled as a tablet, and uh, which essentially was a small netbook, because I am a bit nostalgic about my university times when I had a tiny little laptop with me that was helping me to study, that was helping me to make conspects, and uh, essentially was the tool that helped me pass my final exams. And this laptop is sort of an ultrabook that, or rather not an ultrabook, a uh, netbook, which has full-fledged Windows version on it, if you're lucky with your install. And uh, it essentially is pretty cheap if you can find it discounted. It will let you study, it will let you work on the go. As I said, 5 to 6 hours of battery time with balanced mode, uh, not really performant. When you switch to performance it doesn't do anything really, just some windows, sleep settings. And uh, it can get really hot, yes, if you push it to its limits, but it's not a laptop to push to its limits, obviously. If you want to push it to its limits, you need something else. And if you're fine with a laptop that can be a bit loud with fan, that doesn't have the best speakers, but which is very small and portable, this is the thing to get. 50 Hz screen doesn't really affect experience, and uh, I can use it in 50 Hz mode without any issues, like on Windows. I've been using it for a week at this point, or maybe even more and uh, I don't really think 50 Hz is an issue for this screen size. It's not a laptop for media, it's not a laptop for entertainment, not for gaming, not for video consumption. It's a workhorse which is cheap and can do stuff you throw at it. So that's its purpose. 
and uh, Chewy did a great job with the hardware side of things. Uh, unfortunately, they used exotic hardware, which is not really supported by Linux yet, which is not supported by Microsoft at all, unless you install their drivers. So I wanted to show the stuff that other people don't show here. The resource allocation, the quality of screen, the keyboard, the trackpad. I spoke about trackpad a bit because a lot of people skip on trackpad uh, part of the story. And unfortunately, sometimes you are left with a laptop that you don't really like using. And this is again, not the laptop to like using as is. You need a mouse with it to fully utilize its powers and strengths. Or at least on Windows, you can decently use it like trackpad is usable. Uh, but it's not a pleasant experience. And I really hope that Linux will implement proper support for trackpad as well in the future. Maybe I was just unlucky with my Linux distro I chose, but regardless, I hope this video was helpful to someone who maybe saved their money or instead like uh, decided to buy this laptop because of my review. And if it was helpful to you, please perform YouTube routine. My name was Nicky Joe, and have a nice day.